Here is how you go about building a custom template. I'm going to build a trifold template for a custom card size. Now the final folded card size is going to be 7 inches wide by 5 inches tall. And because it's a trifold, I know I'm going to need 3 of those. So 5 times 3 is 15 inches and 7 inches wide. So my overall area that I'm looking at is 5 by, no, 7 by 15 inches. Well, the way I begin once I have my initial measurement for a template is by creating a new file and saying, okay, well, what's this template for? It's for printing, so I know that I need to set my resolution to 300 dpi and also my color mode to CMYK and then set my canvas size to my final trim size. So this is the way the final thing will be. And we decided just now that was 7 by 15. And then I would click OK. So here's our canvas. But we need to divide this equally into three parts. And to do that, I'm going to grab my marquee tool and create a rectangle that goes at least from side to side make a new layer and then fill that layer with color and deselect. Once I have that initial layer set up, I'm going to line it up with the very top of this document or to the very edge. And then I will duplicate that layer. So I'm going to hit Command J to duplicate it. And then hold Shift while I click and drag it down. Now if I zoom in here, you'll notice that as I get really, really close to this top one, there's just a little hairline of space left between. You want that little bit of space left between those two objects, and I'll show you why here in just a second. So I'm going to make another copy, Command J, and then hold Shift while I drag that down. Holding Shift keeps it from moving side to side. And then once I move in, grab your Move tool and use your up or down arrow keys to nudge this a lot closer. So now I have three equally sized panels. To figure out exactly where a trifold would fold, create three equally sized panels, grab all three layers, and then just do a transform, Command T, and drag it out to the very edge of the actual canvas. And wherever those lines are, that's where you're going to fold. So this is where I begin pulling out some guidelines. To create guidelines, you need your rulers visible. To show your rulers, go to View and choose Rulers. You can change the size or measurement of your rulers by right-clicking on it and choosing something like inches, which is what we're looking at. Then you click and drag, and I would line it up with the line between those two shapes, and again with the second one. You may have a snap feature on. If you have snap features on, things will kind of pop into place. So actually, that's sort of a nice thing to have occasionally with this sort of thing. Once you've got your guidelines in place, you don't actually need these panels anymore. So I'm going to get rid of those layers. This is the basic final size of a tri-folding card. Now, if I were to be putting color on this card that went all the way to all the edges, I would need to make a couple more changes to this template. Color going completely to the edge is called a full bleed graphic. And because it's going all the way to the edge, usually that does not mean that that special printer was able to put ink right to the edge of the paper. It means that you actually had a bigger paper than what you ended up with and you printed more ink beyond that edge and then just trimmed the excess off. So we need to actually make our space a little bit bigger to allow for some bleed. What I like to do is make sure I have some guidelines along each of the edges of my document. So I've got my snap feature turned on. I went to view and chose snap so it's turned on. And then I'm dragging out a guideline from the top and the side to go around all four edges. This indicates our trim line so we don't forget where the actual edge of our card is going to be. 
the next thing to do is make sure your colors are set to default black and white. So click on the little default square so white is in the background. Go to image and canvas size. Check the relative box and make sure that your measurement is in inches and that the center, the dot, is here in the center of these squares. Typical bleed space uh, anymore is about an eighth of an inch. This can vary depending on where you're getting things printed. So if you are having something like this commercially printed, you need to call your printer and ask them how much bleed area they need. And I can almost promise you their answer is going to be an eighth of an inch. So to add an eighth of an inch on both sides of the width, I would be adding a quarter of an inch. So I'm going to hit 0.25 on that width and then again on the height. By setting it relative, I only need to enter the amount I need to add instead of adding up my entire total of area. And then click OK. Those guidelines we placed still remain where they were and now this would be a full bleed template that I could send to, I could fill with graphics and send it to my printer who told me they needed an eighth of an inch bleed and they would put it on a template and deal with things like trim marks and any other registration marks they needed. So typically when you're creating a, a file to be commercially printed, this is about all you need to do to get a template set up. When you're being really thorough in your template setup, it's also a good idea to mark where your safe text area is. What a safe text area is, is the you do not want your text getting so close to the trim line that if that trim line is slightly off of where it should be, things get cut away. So it's a good idea to measure an eighth of an inch in from your trim line, which is this line right here, and putting up another guideline set that shows where your safe text area is. So right here is our zero. At the top left of your document is the zero point and you can actually change that zero point so instead of having to count in two eighths to find our mark if you really only want to think in one eighth increments you can click here in the corner and drag out this little crosshairs and place it over that and now our zero point on our rulers is relocated to that intersection. So now I can drag out a guide and place it one eighth of an inch in from that trim line on all sides. I'm not going to bother resetting my zero point for this just because an eighth of an inch is easy to figure out. It's when you run into really funky measurements that it's kind of nice to figure that out. So on something like a trifold you kind of have two safe text areas. We're looking at the paper overall as an entire thing and we've put a guideline that our small informative text won't cross out of from the top and on the sides. Depending on what you're creating, if you intend for these panels to be individually looked at and don't want any text crossing the folds, it might be a good idea to set up safe text lines on either side of the fold line. This is another good one where it might be a, a nice idea to relocate our zero point. So I've relocated the zero point and I'm putting an eighth of an inch guide on either side of that fold line. Now as long as you were working in Photoshop, this sort of file would work great because the guidelines are there, they will stay even if you flatten it to a JPEG, but if you needed to create a template to go somewhere else, this file wouldn't actually do you much good. It would be set up to the print standard in the correct size for a full bleed template. But if you had to save it as a JPEG, there's not really anything to show where those folds would be. So the other part of a template is creating the template markings to guide someone who is not used to your file in how to lay their text on there. 
So what I like to do is select just the safe text area and fill it with a really faint color. I guess we'll see if I really did measure these right. And look at that, I am a tiny bit off. Shows what happens when you work in a hurry. Being exact in your measurements is a lovely thing to be. But I would create a safe text area and then if I were folding I would probably create a dotted line along the fold. Now the easiest way I know that to do that is get your default colors, grab your pen tool and set the drop down next to it to shape. Set fill to zero and stroke to whatever color you want the dotted line to be and then choose the style from the lines and simply click Hold shift to keep everything straight and click on the other side, command click off to hide it and now we've got our dotted line. Now if you want to see exactly what this looks like just go up to view and say show and guides. That will turn those off so we can see what they look like. I'm going to duplicate this layer and simply drag it down to be between those other two lines and there you have it is a fold card. Now you'll notice that there's a difference in space between the edge here and the edge up here. It looks like there's a lot more room. Well this is where you need to remember that the trim area is going to be this outside line. So really there's an eighth of an inch on the inside of the fold and an eighth of an inch on the inside of the trim. Usually once I've created things like that, I'll flatten all of my template indicators into one layer and name it something like template don't print and then right click on the layer and set it to an ominous color that will be eye catching and I'll remember to turn that off so I don't accidentally print it. If you're saving for Photoshop templates only, I would recommend at this point saving a .psd which is your typical Photoshop file and keeping the layers. When you name your file I also recommend keeping the name pretty straightforward with the word template in it. So this is a 7 by 15 tri-card and then template and save. So the steps to a template Consider what you are creating, the final size, and then can, uh, work out the measurements to add an eighth of an inch bleed on the outside if necessary, and an eighth of an inch measurement inside of the final size or the trim size to keep your type safe from getting trimmed off. And then create your indicators, put on guidelines, and save it all as either a Photoshop document if that's what you intend to use it in or perhaps as a JPEG that can be uploaded and used in multiple graphics editing programs.